What up, guys? Your boy Quake, and I'm back with a brand new episode of the Diverse Mentality Podcast, number 133. And I'm doing this one solo dolo. Vito is out doing a bunch of things. So, like I said, because we we're supposed to do the the five year anniversary of Diverse Mentality, but um, you know, because that was April 9th, which was this past Saturday. But he's busy with some things, I understand. So we pushed the five-year anniversary till next Saturday. So this upcoming Saturday, which I believe the date is the 16th. And yes, it is the 16th. And we'll do it around 3 p.m. Eastern. You guys can call in. Uh, I'm going to do it on the main YouTube channel, Diverse Mentality. Live stream it. And yeah, you guys can call in and we'll just, I don't know, talk about music, react, ask me questions, so on and so forth. And I think it'll be a dope, you know, fun event to have for the five-year anniversary of Diverse Mentality. Um, moving on from that, there is, of course, like I always mentioned, the PS5 giveaway, diversementality.com forward slash giveaway. We roughly got about a month left until the contest is over, which was May 15th is the date that it's officially over. Then uh, we reveal the winners live on May 22nd. I'm probably going to do it on the main YouTube channel as well, the Diverse Mentality YouTube channel. So I'm excited for that because I can't wait to give something away to all of you that are supporting. That's that's something that we, we're going to try to do as much as we can, as often as we can, especially as well for the Patreon supporters because you know those people are putting their hard-earned money into uh, supporting us. So we want to do as much as we can on there. Just give us a little bit of time. We're, I'm trying to, like I said, change locations when it comes to this office, this office is really far away from where I live. So driving here every day is is damn near impossible. Um, so once we switch locations, I'll be able to kind of be more office and start doing more stuff. But we're, we're figuring things out right now. I'm still trying to get little uh, little pieces and parts put together. But uh, all, also, you know, we need more members on Patreon to be able to do certain things. Because if you only have a certain amount of people in there, let's just say... For each tier, you know, we only have 20 people. Let's just say that. Um, that's not enough to get things going for certain tiers. So that's why we're I'm trying to build that up with documentaries and just telling people. And uh, it's growing. Of course, the Discord, a lot of people are starting to join that, thankfully, finally, um, because people join on Patreon, but then they, they don't join the Discord. So join the Discord. And uh, it's a hip-hop community. We'll be talking about music on there. We talk about various different things. So join that. And... Uh, you know, patreon.com forward slash diverse mentality. Support us on there. We appreciate the support on there as well. And I got, um, let's see, I got three documentaries coming. I got the Young Dolphin, Yo Gotti, What Really Happened, coming this upcoming week. I have no specific day, probably Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, somewhere around there, because the audio is pretty much done. I just got to edit. And then I got two other documentaries I'm working on before I go on vacation, which is April 22nd. My birthday is April 23rd, so I'm trying to go on vacation for a week, uh, be out and about, and for that week, what I want to do is drop uh, the Kid Kid interview. I know you guys have been waiting on that. A lot of you have been saying, where is it at? Where is it at? That's when I wanted to drop it. I kind of wanted to drop I That's why I kind of waited, too, because I had to do a documentary with it. I'm doing a What Happened to Kid Kid video, and I'm going to add that interview in that video and drop the interview. So that's what I was really waiting on is to have a documentary attached to the interview on top of that, it makes sense to drop it because at that time, I'll be gone for a week. So there will be no podcast for a whole week. So might as well, in between that week, drop a Kid Kid interview so you guys can enjoy that. It's two hours long, so technically it's two episodes. I might even split it up. Part one, drop it on the regular Monday, and then part two, drop it on a Thursday. I don't know. I'm deciding on that still. But it's two hours and 20 minutes. Amazing. And for you Patreon supporters, the cool thing about the Kid Kid thing is we're going to be giving away a signed Kid Kid CD. On top of that, we have behind-the-scenes video footage of before we started recording the podcast. There's about 20, 30 minutes where I talk to Kid Kid with nobody knowing that the cameras are on. You know, it's just we're just chilling, talking. So the audio isn't perfect or anything, but I, I fixed it to where it's, like, listenable. You can still listen to it. And he just tells dope stories before we even get on the podcast. That I'm going to give to you guys on Patreon exclusively because, you know, extra content you guys are supporting. Why not? Um, so be on the lookout for all that. Let's get into the news, all the news that's happening. Uh, I just wanted to talk about this quickly because, you know, I kind of wanted to follow up from what happened 
couple of weeks ago. Will Smith, uh, he officially has gotten banned from the Oscars for 10 years for slapping Chris Rock. Yes, 10 years slapping one man. He's been banned. Um, Will Smith, basically, his response to it is, I respect the decision. Obviously, what else is he going to say? He's going to say, yo, fuck the Oscars. It's not, he's not going to say anything like that because I, here's the thing. I like that the Oscars, that the Oscars didn't take away his award. That's one thing that I really liked because, you know, I feel like he earned that award regardless, even though if he slapped somebody, you earn their award, you earn it. It is what it is. Banning, I, I can see why they banned him. That makes sense. You know, you slap somebody, you're inciting violence. Makes sense. Ban the person. Now, ban them for 10 years? I, I disagree with that. That's way too long. For slapping somebody, you get... Now, nah, I understand it, you know. God forbid, you know, the guy, I don't know, you shot him or something. I don't know, something crazy. Something crazier than slapping, whatever. I don't know, pulled his pants down and, uh, I don't know, did something stupid, you know. Who knows? Um, I can understand that. I can understand banning somebody for, you know, 10 years for that. Slapping somebody, I don't really, I don't know. It's not really that big of a deal. You go on reality TV shows, you see people get slapped every day, man. Uh, people get slapped every day, you know, as long as you didn't, like, punch them with a fist, cause, you know, black eye, cause, you know, physical damage in any way, which, you know, he got slapped. His face probably was hurting for, like, I don't know. I've never been slapped that hard, so I don't know. Probably 30 seconds to a minute. Um, it, do, it doesn't warrant 10 years. It warrants, if you want to say maximum five years, let's just say. Even that, that's pretty long, but maximum five years, maybe two years at minimum. Ban him for two years. Within two years, people will 100% forget. If he does come back in two years and people are still talking about it, eh, who cares? It was a slap. It wasn't that big of a deal. Uh, I think people were overreacting to it. It's a slap. It's not that big of a deal. I, I, I mean, if I was Will Smith, I wouldn't give a fuck. I got my Oscar award. They didn't take that from me. I already accomplished. I, I have a hell of a career that I've accomplished. To me, it wouldn't matter, man. Awards, like I always say, awards to me doesn't dictate whether I like an artist, whether I like an actor, whether I like any person doing anything. I don't care. I like what I like. It doesn't matter if the person wins awards, if he or she wins anything. It doesn't matter to me. If I like the person, I'll like whatever they're creating, whether they win an award or not. So to me, Will Smith, this was Will Smith's first Oscar ever. Clearly before that, he's had way dope movies that deserved Oscars and he never won them. So who cares? Um, I don't think Will Smith cares. By the time he comes back, I think he'll be 63 years old. So he'd be 53, 63. Who cares? That's my take on it. Fuck awards. They never dictate to me what's hot, what's not, what I like, what I don't like. It doesn't matter to me. So whatever. 10 years is a little excessive, but whatever. That's what they deem reasonable. Uh, Fulio. If you guys don't know who Fulio is, he is a rapper out of Jacksonville. Probably one of the hottest rappers out of Jacksonville. You got Young and Ace. You got Hot Boy. You got quite a few rappers um, from Florida that are kind of blowing up that I really enjoy. At least I listen to. Uh, I like a lot of the newer generation, and the reason why I like them is because they don't really care, but then that also is a is like a double-edged sword. Because they don't care, they talk about a bunch of reckless shit, so um, I don't know. There's a, there's like a different balance to it, so uh, he was arrested. So reports have surfaced that the Florida rapper Fulio might have found himself behind bars. According to a document shared by No Jumper and other outlets, Fulio was detained at 8.37 p.m. in Jacksonville on Tuesday, April 5th for allegedly fleeing slash attempting to elude a Jacksonville sheriff deputy after they told him to stop. The document also reads that the 23-year-old rapper is being held without bond and no court date is currently set. Neither the rapper nor his team has confirmed or denied their arrest, but if reports are true, it marks yet another problematic occurrence for the controversial spitter. Fulio originally, named, originally made a name for himself by name-dropping dead enemies in his music, a controversial tactic that, later, that he later admitted was childish, but that seemed to have made him a target regardless. Last November, the dead ops lyricist was leaving a recording studio when gunmen opened fire at him, shooting at Fulio a reported 100 times. Fulio was able to walk away with minor injuries and later flexed his survival on Instagram. Um, so, 
why flee? I know you're probably facing charges, but it's just going to make it worse, man. I see a lot of these, like, cop instances where it's like a cop pulls somebody over and decide to flee. Like, one, I was watching one on YouTube just randomly. Sometimes I just go to the wormhole of YouTube. Uh, their channel's called Real World Police or something like that, or Code Blue Cam or something like that, one of those channels. And there's a guy just chilling in an Audi. And then, you know, tap on his window like, hey, hello, you know, are you awake? He looked like he was just dozed off on drugs. And he had a warrant out for his arrest. It was for some, I don't know, something minor. It wasn't anything major. Like, you would probably get six months in jail, three to six months in jail for it. It was something that wasn't, like, it was like a misdemeanor or something like that. I don't know. Um, but the guy just, you know, floors it. They try to get him out the car. He floors it, runs off, drives, hits like a pole. Now you just added, like, three, four, five, six other charges for no reason. It's like, be a man, just face whatever you did. You already made it out, you know, for that long, and you're you're running out, you're technically on the run. They finally got you. It is what it is. Accept it. So I don't understand when these rappers do this. We've constantly reported stories of rappers getting pulled over. You got NBA Youngboy running. You got, uh, I believe it was Fabio Forn or, I don't know, some New York rapper that I forget. It might have been Fabio. It might have been somebody else. Dave East or something like that. They run, you know, gun flies out. They're like, oh, shit, you got a gun. You know, it's like you got caught. Learn your lesson. Move on. Move forward and put it behind you. But, yeah, they did try to flee an attempt. You're not going to you're not gonna escape the cops, man, especially with technology nowadays. The chances of you escaping are like this isn't Fast and Furious where you're just going to go in a garage tunnel and, you know, no cop is going to notice you ever again. And you're going to walk out of that garage tunnel and pretend like you're walking and nothing ever happened. I think Vin Diesel did that in the first one, yeah. So, just face the charges, man. Hopefully, the Fulio gets over this. And uh, I'm glad that he admitted that di- this thing, the dead ops, was childish because it is childish. Uh, and he that needs to be like that needs to be looked at as corny. So it needs to be stopped. So it's so it's stopped being done. Because when you when you point out something as corny, and when the internet makes fun of it, then usually people stop doing it for the most part. The baby. The baby man, his, <laughs> I feel bad for his lawyers, man. His lawyers have to go through so much shit. His PR team and all that, they got to go through so much shit because this guy just gets into something every week. It's just like he cannot stay out of the headlines for some reason. This was just weird. This whole video was weird. Um, yeah, so let's just go over the article. The baby has responded to a viral video that seemingly showed the rapper trying to lock lips with a fan who wasn't interested. The video made the rounds online Thursday, April 7th, and showed the rapper uh, cupping a fan's face outside of a concert venue and trying to pull her in for a smooch. The fan was then seen pulling away from the baby, and the internet quickly began clowning him for getting curbed. The baby has since pushed back against these accusations and took to Instagram to show there is more to the story. The Charlotte native reshared the original video of the same encounter that had been posted on Instagram in February. In the baby's video, he and a fan who continuously referred to as the baby girl hug in a loving embrace for a few moments. The baby then tries to kiss her friend who allegedly called out, that's my baby, before he went in for the kiss. According to the rapper who commented on the shade room, the, the friend wouldn't kiss him back, not because she didn't want to, but because he had already blown a kiss to someone else. Who be making this cap ass shit, bruh? The baby wrote on the Instagram story as he reshared the shade room's video. Y'all go ahead, man. The baby wrote in the next slide above his own video. Me and my boo-boos love each other to death, but ain't no kissing going on. The whole video looks weird, man. If you guys watch the video, it's basically he's like outside, like like they explained, out of a concert. He's like looking dazed, and then he sees this girl, and then like he grabs her face and then tries to like kiss her, and she kind of like moves away. It's just weird, man. I wouldn't do that to my fans or, you know, it just, I don't know. I find that, you know, I, me personally, I find kissing more intimate, and I don't, I wouldn't do that just with anybody. That's just my take on it. But the baby obviously feels like he's really intimate with his female fans. And um, it's bad, man. That could lead to a lawsuit. That could lead to sexual harassment. That could lead to a bunch of shit. You know, his PR team has to clean his image up consistently. And I'm sure it's annoying for them because they're like, what the fuck is going on? This guy gets into some shit every single week. And now we got to fix it. We got to make it seem like it's not weird. And we got to, all that stuff. So. Yeah, the baby man, uh, just lay low, man. Focus on the music and stop dealing with this bullshit. 
Uh, Akon. Akon says his ex-business partner is trying to freeze his assets. So we reported this on a while ago that um, Akon's, I believe, um, let's see, ex-business partner who's a who's previously a music music executive. Um, yeah, we reported this on a while ago, but there's new reports and new details about this. So through both his extensive philanthropic work and successful music career, Akon has accumulated a great deal of wealth over the years. In 2020, the convict music mogul said he's even secured $4 billion from investors to begin construction on a futuristic cryptocurrency themed city in Senegal. The city would have per would have parks, hotels, a stadium, and would rely entirely on Akon's digital currency, Acoin. However, Devon Steffens, Akon's ex-business partner who was previously a mu music executive for Jay-Z, Destiny's Child, and others, said in March court filing that the Smack That Singer is running a Ponzi scheme with this futuristic city and demanded a judge freeze his New York City assets. Via page six, Akon's lawyers bit back on Steffens in court documents filed to the Manhattan Supreme Court on Monday, April 4th. The documents accuse the former business partner of trying to damage Akon's reputation out of spite while he is engaged in some of the most consequential and ambitious projects of his entrepreneurial career. Akon's lawyer added the lawsuit was character assassination and wrote that the suit has inflicted unwarranted damage on Akon. Steffens has also previously accused the Senegalese singer songwriter of owing him $4 million in unpaid royalties in a separate 2018 lawsuit. He had previously called Akon a dishonorable spendthrift that shirks his responsibilities and does not keep promises. The suit came after Akon had reportedly agreed to pay Steffens $3.25 million over the course of four years, but then allegedly backed out of the pay in the last $750,000 installment. This was the third time Steffens had taken Akon to court since helping the Senegal singer launch his career in 2004. Akon is asking the judge to reject Stefan's request to freeze his assets. So yeah, trying to freeze somebody's assets, you're basically trying to handicap them um, so then they can finally pay. <clears throat> basically owes him, what, $750,000 more, and he didn't pay up the rest. So I don't know, Akon's looking pretty bad here. Let me get a uh, drink quick because my mouth gets dry quick when I'm the only one talking 24-7. But yeah, I think um, you obviously, if you paid already 3.25, and what's another 750 at that point? Just pay it, get it out of the way, Akon. And you got to admire what Akon's doing, man. I miss his music, obviously. I still feel like his 2008 album, Freedom, is arguably one of the best. It's definitely in my top 10 of all time. Dare I say that? I think it's in my top 10 of all time. I really enjoy that album. Really, really great album. If you guys haven't heard the Freedom album, let's just say you're not much of an Akon fan, listen to the Freedom album. That was his last, like, full-length album. The other ones that he dropped were just kind of, like, random different uh, genres of music that he dropped, which were cool, but I don't know. That was, that was the last, like, peak Akon, which I miss because Akon is, is arguably one of the best artists that I've heard in a long time. Uh, Trey Song. So we report, of course, as you guys know, when we report positive negatives about everybody if there is a negative article that comes out and then later on the person's name gets cleared we will update you guys and report on it and if we get information wrong because sometimes when we record when we record these podcasts the following day or literally hours after we're done recording it there might be a statement that says hey this was false or Somebody says this, and then it's not true. Like just recently with the Acon, I mean, not with the Acon thing, with the Kanye West thing, where uh, there was reports that you know he wanted to go ahead and get help, stuff like that. The manager said no, that it wasn't true. You know, so th we didn't we didn't get that news till like hours after we recorded the podcast. So sometimes that happens. So if you guys see this on YouTube and you guys are like, oh, why aren't you? You know, what are you talking about? You know, this already happened. You have to remember this was recorded probably 24 hours before it even got released, roughly 24 hours. So you got to kind of, you know, think about that before you respond and say, hey, this is late or this is this, this is that. So I'm actually thinking about doing something to fix that. If I get the new office location, I'm looking to do highlights of news articles, post them on the YouTube immediately, and then just kind of scrunch them into one and as regular podcasts, if that makes sense. So every time news happens, 
I'll upload it on the highlights on the YouTube. And then I'll scrunch all those highlights into a regular podcast episode like normal. So that's my plan to kind of combat that down the line. But speaking of that, we reported a while ago that Trey Songs is facing a sexual assault case. He's actually facing two of them from what I'm aware. Might be more than that, but two so far. Trey Songs has been cleared in one. Cleared. So far in one. This is the one in Vegas. So let's let's talk about it. While Trey Songs is still embroiled in numerous lawsuits involving women who have accused him of sexual assault, the R and B crooner put one legal issue to rest on Friday, April eighth, as the Las Vegas Police Department announced they're no longer investigating him for rape. As broken by TMZ, Trey was accused of sexually assaulting a woman while in town to celebrate his thirty seventh birthday party last November. The incident had allegedly occurred after hours at the Cosmopolitan of Las Vegas Hotel when the singer and his entourage returned from Dryas nightclub with numerous women. The LFMPD has concluded the investigation to the sexual assault allegations against Termaine Neverson and determined that no criminal charges will be filed, police told TMZ. If any new evidence comes to light, the case will be reopened for further investigation. We are pleased that Trey Songs has been cleared of wrongdoing, the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department investigation has officially been closed, says Trey's attorney, David Chesnoff and Richard Seanfield. Uh, uh, we are grateful to the LVMPD for the professional police work done and through their investigation, which included findings of inconsistency in the witness testimony and insufficient evidence. We are pleased that Trey Songs can now return to what he does best, entertaining. As previously noted, Trey Songs, Trey Songs is still facing multiple legal battles elsewhere involving other women. He was recently accused by Jane Doe of anally raping her at a house party in Los Angeles. A $12 million civil lawsuit referred to Trey Songs as a savage rapist and said the pair maintained consensual relationship until 2016. There's also other women that are suing in New York and Miami. So he's facing multiple ones. I knew there was one, um, yeah, in Miami, I think, yeah. So there, there was a few different ones, but yeah, he's facing one, two, three. He's facing about four, four sexual assault charges. Um, oh, wow. There's another one in Georgia. Oh, that's okay. So the limit, the woman lives in Georgia, but it happened in Miami. So that is the same Miami one. So there's four, technically four he's facing still. So you got cleared out of one of them. So that's good news. You got one out the way. You still got four to face, which is not good news. You know, uh, if I got accused five times of sexual assault, uh, where there's smoke, there's fire. I'm not saying he did it, but it does not look good. If you got clear to one, that's very good news. Hopefully he gets clear to the rest if he didn't do it. If he did do it, uh, obviously he deserves every, anything negative coming towards his way because nobody condones that shit. It's like R. Kelly 2.0 type of situation, but without underage women. Um, so, yeah, we'll keep our eye out. Obviously, we'll clear his name if he gets cleared. In the other cases, we'll report on it. I'm definitely never going to only report on the negative. I will follow up with the positive news as best as we can. Obviously, there's going to be so many articles sometimes that come out. You can't cover every little thing that happens. So, But for the most part, I do cover these instances where they get accused of something serious and then their name finally gets cleared. Um, this guy, this guy's been missing for a while. This guy has been missing for a while. We haven't talked about him in a while. But I got to talk about him. I mean, whether you guys like him or not, man, um, he is part of rap slash hip hop in a way. So 6 9 officially declares he is back. And I kind of got to, I don't know, what he said in the caption is what kind of interested me. Uh, there's a trailer for his, um, his comeback. It's a very interesting trailer. It's like this old lady kind of consulting him like, yes, dear, you'll be, you'll be okay. And then, and then he's like in this like kind of tub, I think of blood or something like that. And then he gets up, ah, and just starts yelling. And then that's like, it says April 15th, you know, come back. King is back or some shit like that. So in the cap, she says, I hope everybody enjoyed their 15 minutes, meaning I hope everybody enjoyed their 15 minutes of fame. You guys aren't superstars. I am a superstar. You only got 15 minutes of fame. That's it. My turn to come back. He says, the demon is back April 15th. I'm the beast they couldn't contain. 
the industry's most hated animal. April 15th, the king of New York is coming back. I'm coming back home. Um, <laughs> he also posted on a story, when I left and took a break, I didn't say a word to no one. I didn't need to explain nothing. I just did it. I woke up, and now I want to take over again. Now get out of my way. The king of New York is back. He also revealed on his uh, Instagram that uh, kind of a preview of the new song, and he's out in Brooklyn, just out in Brooklyn, literally just like walking around. Nothing's happening to him. The guy's like, you know, not getting touched at all. So he's out in Brooklyn trolling, essentially. He said, 100,000 comments if you're ready for this April 15th. I'm the king of New York. This is my city, Brooklyn, uh, and I still don't get touched. I still didn't get touched. Which is true, man. Um, the guy, the guy's been trolling about dead people. The guy's been doing everything that you can to provoke people, and nobody's done anything about it. You know, you got Nipsey Hussle getting killed. You got Possible getting killed. King Von getting killed. All these people. Not saying that Six Nine deserves to get killed because I don't know who am I to say I'm not God here, where I get to decide who decides who should live and not. But I mean, yeah, you guys. You know, there's like other rappers getting killed, and then you got this guy just trolling the shit out of everybody, and nothing's happening to him. Um, so obviously, it's harder to get at somebody when they're not outside like that. So that makes sense. He's not really like when he makes these videos of him being in Brooklyn. He's there for probably a couple hours, maybe eight hours at max, and then they leave to shoot the video, do the, whatever they got to do to shoot the video, and they're out of there. They're not there. You never see that guy again there. Like if he if he was out and about you know, going places left and right, you know, then it would make sense. But he does move smart, too. You got to give him props for that. He does move smart. He has security around him. Doesn't let people know where he's at. You know, stuff like that. He moves very diligently. So, um, the preview of the record, yeah, we'll we'll keep our eye on this track and just see what it's about. Um, he says he is the king of New York. So, there, there are, um, right now, Fabio Foreign is doing good with the album. I haven't listened to it yet. I need to check it out. But who else has that King of New York title? Like King of New York. Like is dominating on sales, is dominating mainstream, is dominating New York. Pop Smoke would have had that. If Pop Smoke was alive, he definitely would have had that. But you got Cardi B. But Cardi B's been kind of low key. I think she dropped a music video track recently. But Cardi B is probably the only one out of New York right now that's like making hella noise and just dominating like crazy. I can't think of anybody right now. I might be forgetting some people. Let me see. Off the top of my head, who is dominating New York? I mean, you got Bobby Schmurder, but he's not making any noise. You got A Boogie with a hoodie. who's pretty decent. Like I said, Fabio Foreign. So, I don't know. Uh, it's a good good question, but he claims he is the king of New York. If he comes back and starts doing numbers again and just dominating charts, I mean, how can you debate, you know, who's the king of New York? You know, you got other people that are better rappers, Griselda, all of them, they got way better bars. And, you know, you got people that have accomplished more over the past. But right now, who's the king of New York? The only one you could debate is Cardi B. At least that's what I'm thinking. So, uh, we'll keep our eye on that. But, he's, of course, he's going to stroll his way to this. So, uh, this was dope. I really enjoyed um, this video clip because this video clip shows why Kanye West is one of the greatest of all time because you can tell as an executive producer, he takes that shit seriously. So let me, let me first play the clip and then let you guys kind of, it's Rick Ross talking about why he delivered, which a lot of people debate why he delivered one of the best verses of his career, which is the, my beautiful dark twisted fantasy verse with devil in a new dress. A lot of people say that is Rick Ross's best verse of his career, which I can see why. And I can kind of agree to that, but he appeared on LeBron's Rick Ross appeared on LeBron's, the shop show. And he talked about why Kanye West, you know, why he got that, why he delivered that type of verse on Kanye West's album. So it's very interesting. Remember, it's, it's for the streets. Ross, when you heard devil in a blue dress, did you know where he was going to put your verse at? 
Did you, you hear it like that? Space. You, did you that space when it came he on? Set you up did it, so did it bug you out when you heard it like that? No, no. I was actually in Hawaii. We was collaborating. I was working with Kanye on my beautiful, you know, no, Dark Twisted Fantasy. That's, that's my favorite. As soon as I heard the beat, I wrote a verse to it right then. Oh, right away. I started just. You wrote that verse right away. I wrote, yeah, right. That's a monster. An hour later, no, the verse you heard ain't the verse that it's what it was. Verse. I wrote a verse, two or three verses right then. Just to let Kanye hit the vibe. And I was like, this is my verse right here. This is the verse I want. He listened to it, walked off, came back an hour later. Rose, I know you. No, this is like the first time somebody ever told Rose. Right. I know you. You could go harder. Whoa. Uh, Whoa. He a producer. He's a producer. Hold on, what is so when he said that, what did you do? You know, Rose ain't used to that. <laughs> How did Rose respond to that? Oh, man, it, it, this might be like confusion. Right. You might have to get this, on the plane. This right. feeling like confusion. Right. Hold on. Because you like, he questioning what you, what you wrote. You don't like what you wrote. That's what he really said. Yeah, that's exactly that's what you said. Three or four verses. And I, like, I, I, I just dissected it. I looked at him, yeah, because he went vibe to it, came back an hour later. You know, I'm listening to some You done moved on. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is what I'm saying. It's easy. <laughs> <laughs> he came back. Um, Rose, you know I know you. This verse right here, you could. And I looked at him, what? I could what? <laughs> <laughs> Don't even finish that. Just chill. Come back and holler at me. He closed the room. I said, this nigga crazy. <laughs> and I went back in immediately. Right then. And wrote that verse we heard. The verse you heard. He was right. Wow. wow. He was right. That's why Ye is a great producer. No, without a doubt. He most definitely going to challenge you. Yeah. He most definitely going to bring. And that, to me, to be great and make sure everybody that's in the room with you great, you have to challenge and not just accept. Yeah. Is there anybody? So, William Roberts, you know, spit arguably one of the best verses of his career on that track. And this is why I say Kanye West is one of the greatest of all time because he doesn't he doesn't give a shit about your feelings. He doesn't care what you're going to say. He says, give me the best product that you can give me. And Rick Ross said that's the first time in his career. Think about that. That was what? I believe that album came out in 2010. That was the first time since he's been rapping. So, you could argue he's been rapping since 2000, 2003. Didn't blow up to 2006. So let's just say, let's count from the time he blew up till at that moment. From 2006, 2009, roughly over four years of his career, nobody challenged him. Nobody said, hey, you can write better than this. Kanye, it took Kanye West to finally say, hey, bro, this isn't that good of a verse, man. And he, did that, he, did, he did that recently with Soldier Boy. Remember when he didn't appear on the Donda album? He just didn't like the verse. He said, nah, you, you got to go harder than that. And then on Donna 2, Soldier Boy goes hard and actually does well. So, you know, that was just a dope story. And that's that's that just shows you that if you just, you're honest with people um, and do it in a respectful way, obviously. You don't be like, oh, this shit is fucking great. A, two packs of ass. Then it's like, come on, you know, now you're just shitting on somebody. Um, but yeah, he was honest with William Roberts. Very honest with him. Told him. Hey, you know, we need those locking up bars. We need those correctional. I'm just playing. <laughs> we need those correctional officer bars. Nah, but he killed him, man. Uh, I always give props to an artist if their music is dope. And William Roberts definitely has dope music. To, to say that he, he's, an, he's a whack artist is straight up just hating. You know, I can, I can acknowledge when there's an artist can make great music. And William... He definitely can make great music. There's a lot of tracks that I have on my phone. Like, one of my favorites is so sophisticated. Meek Mill, um, obviously the first album, Port of Miami, Hustlin', uh, Push It to the Limit, all those records. Uh, you got the Aston Martin music, which is some of my favorite, too. So, you know, Williams got dope records. But that's just a testament to both, actually. William being so great at being able to hit a different level with his bars and then Kanye West being so great at just being honest and saying, hey, you can do better than this and pushing people to deliver that next level. That's what great executive producers do. Producers, everything. So shout out to Kanye West. Always making sure we get the best product possible. Um, the 22, 2022 Billboard 
awards, music awards nominations. Now, this is the only award show that I put any like attention to because the rest of the award shows are literally just opinions. That's all it is. Like I said earlier about Will Smith, just opinions. If you want an award, it's just an opinion at the end of the day. It might be a majority opinion, but it's still an opinion. And opinions are like assholes. Everybody has one, so who gives a shit? The Billboard Music Awards, for the most part, around 80 to 90% is based off of numbers and facts. Like, hey, you have the best-selling album, you win the award because you sold the best. You do this, you do that. A lot of people would argue you're faking streams. It's all, you know, your industry plan. There's ways around that, though. Like, if you're faking streams... And then you do a concert and you only can fill up a thousand people. You know, you're doing millions upon millions and billions of streams, but you only can do a concert and only fill up a thousand people. That's fake then. You're obviously faking your streams. But if you do a million streams and then you're filling out your concerts with 10,000, 20,000 people, clearly you're doing real numbers because that's, that's where it translates. That's where you can tell if it's fake or not. If the artist is doing all these insane streams but then does a tour and can barely sell out or do any shows, they're faking their streams, obviously. So that's what I that's my argument when people say, hey, yeah, Billboard deals on facts, but how do we know these streams are real or not? Album sales back then would get would get purchased too. I remember Birdman got caught buying the Carter Four. I believe he got caught buying two hundred thousand copies to to make sure Lil Wayne got to that million million in the first week mark, even though he got to like nine hundred and like something thousand the first week. It wasn't a million. But you know, Birdman bought you got caught buying about 200,000 copies, 150, 200,000, something like that copies. So that happens. That's happened in the past before. Now it can happen a lot easier because you're just streaming through your phone and you can create these like farm factories where you're just streaming, streaming all day and boost your numbers. But like I said, if it doesn't tra- translate to concerts, real life, then that's how you know they're faking it. So let's go over the Billboard uh, 2022 Billboard Music Award nominations. Um. Let's see here. Let me go on their website because. uh, The Weeknd has 17 categories that he's in. Jeez. Doja Cat is leading the female finalists with 14 nominations. Doja Cat is out here, man. Justin Bieber, Kanye West, and Olivia Rodrigo have 13 nominations. Why isn't there like a legit list here? Okay, I see it right now. So you got top artists. You got Doja Cat, Drake, Olivia Rodrigo, Taylor Swift, The Weeknd. I don't know who's going to win that, but these aren't like, the the show isn't until May, so I'm just reading out the nominees. Top new artists, Giveon, Mass Wolf, Olivia Rodrigo, Pooh Shiesty, The Kid LeRae. A top male artist, Drake, Ed Sheeran, Justin Bieber, Lil Nas X, The Weeknd. Top female artist, Adele, Doja Cat, Dua Lipa, Olivia Rodrigo, Taylor Swift. Top Billboard 200 artist, Adele, Drake, Juice World, Morgan Wallen, Taylor Swift. Top Hot 100 artist, Doja Cat, Drake, Justin Bieber, Olivia Rodrigo, The Weeknd. Top Streaming Songs artist, Doja Cat, Drake, Lil Nas X. So a lot of these artists are repeated because they're just dominating. It is what it is. So yeah, a lot of these top rap artists, you got Drake, Juice World, Lil Baby, Moneybag, Yo, and Polo G. Top Rap Male Artist, you got Drake, Juice World, Polo G. Top rap female artists, you got Cardi B, Lotto, Megan Thee Stallion. Top rap tour, you got J. Cole, the off-season tour, Lil Baby, the back outside tour. Omarion and Bow Wow, the millennium tour. And then you got like country categories, all that other stuff. So, yeah, uh, I'll keep my eye out on this. I believe it's on, let me see the exact date. Sunday, wow. So the day that the PlayStation 5 giveaway is over, which is May 15th, that is when the Billboard Music Awards are. So. Uh, we'll be watching that and be on the lookout for that. The game. So, as you guys know, the game likes to be bipolar. Here's another proof of him being bipolar. He simply um, denies that 50 Cent is responsible for his career. And as we know, on Drink Champs, he gave 50 Cent props for being responsible for his career. He said he did more. 50 Cent did more for my career than Dr. Dre. Jimmy Iovine did more for my career than Dr. Dre, blah, 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 blah. Now he's flip flop and said 50 Cent hasn't done shit for my career. And if it wasn't, it doesn't matter if 50 came into my career or not, I would still be the game. So let's play the clip because this is exactly what 50 was talking about when it comes to flip flopping. Uh, there's always something with the game when it comes to flip flopping. 
and I obviously I respect the game as an artist. And he has a point here, though. He has somewhat of a point here. So let's not completely shit on what the game is saying. He does have a point here. So I'll, somewhat of a point. So let me play the clip, and then you guys can kind of, uh, we'll talk about it after. So. Even with these niggas, I, like, like, lo and behold, I was in a group with those niggas, but I wasn't breaking peanut butter and jelly sandwiches in half with G-Unit. I ain't see them niggas in, until it was time to work. So I didn't grow up, like, I, like, I grew up to Fat Joe. Like on Fat Joe Music, on Pun, on Terror Squad, Cuban Link. Like I was locked in. Them niggas, like that shit when I was listening, when I first started smoking weed, it was the Cuban Link's album, bro. Like, like, you know what I'm saying? So, so it was, I was confused because I thought like I was supposed to be loyal to, to like where my heart was and my heart wasn't. Like, a lot of people are like, oh, you, nigga, 50 put you on. No, 50 did not put me on, bro. People don't understand that at that time in LA, I was, I was it. I was the nigga. So that's why Jimmy took me and told 50 he was putting me in G-Unit and 50 accepted because, nigga, my name was ringing bells in the streets of hip-hop. I was already on. So it didn't matter if I signed with Diddy or Irv or whoever the fuck, I was still going to be game. I'm not saying that, like, um, Aftermath and Dre and 50 and those niggas didn't help because that is my story. But if I would have signed the Terror Squad, nigga, I would still be the game. It's no, 50 was talking about we beefing with these niggas. I, like, like, lo and behold, 50 was talking about... So, yeah. Um, I get what the game is saying on this situation. He's saying basically, hey, I already had a buzz... It didn't matter if Dr. Dre signed me. It didn't matter if 50 helped out. It didn't matter the situation. I would still be the game. You could technically argue that with anything. You could argue that with 50 Square. He had a buzz already without Eminem. He didn't need Eminem. He had record labels trying to sign him. He could have signed with somebody else and still been 50 Cent. The argument there is, would you be as big as you are when you sign to them? Now, I know 50's career wouldn't be as big, 100%. 50, with his buzz, he probably would have done, if he'd signed with somebody else, let's just say he decided to sign with, I don't know, um, I don't know, Diddy, let's just say. Diddy says, hey, 50, they did have a meeting, which they did a while ago. Diddy says, I want to sign you. You're going to be a bad boy records artist. Diddy's a great executive producer. I'm sure Diddy could get him a hit record. He would be out of there. How much would he sell? My prediction would have been 4 million records. Maybe 5 million. Maybe. And 50 had a huge buzz. Huge buzz. The hottest thing is in the streets, period. And that wasn't just in New York. That was all over. He did about 4 or 5 million records, which is great for your first album. That is amazing. What do you have in the club? No. Dr. Dre produced that. What do you have? All these other records. 21 Questions. All this stuff that was in-house, aftermath, shady. Never. Plus, you got the push... Of the biggest artist at that time, Eminem, who just got done doing back-to-back albums over a million copies first week. Back-to-back. Anything that Eminem co-signed at the time was going, no matter what. So you got a mixture of that, and then you got a mixture of a guy with the biggest buzz at the time combined. That's why Give Richard I Trying was such a big album. That's why he did two-point-something million copies of the album within three weeks. That's why the album went 14 Sold 14 million records to this day. And In the Club is literally the, the biggest song possibly ever in hip-hop, you could argue. Because it's because of Dr. Dre's production, Eminem's input, Eminem's co-sign, Dr. Dre's co-sign, all this stuff in-house, Nate Dogg on the hook of 21 Questions, all these small things that made 50 so big. Go into the game, You let's just say game, you know, I personally, I mean, I, I was a kid at the time, so I can't really speak on this, but I don't remember hearing about Game before, you know, he really got put on. I didn't even know Game existed like that. Like, But then again, I was a kid. I was like eight, nine years old. So, you know, was I really into hip-hop like that? Back then, it was harder to spread music out than it is now. Now, if you're popping in anywhere, you could be popping in Alaska, and your music can still get, you know, people can still listen to it. But game saying basically in L.A., hey, I was the, the, the hot shit at the time. I was that guy. So regardless, if Dre would have signed me or 50 would have put me in the group, I still would have been popping. That probably would have been true. But would his debut album sell 5 million copies? No. That's how we do in a hater or love it is what catapulted the game to selling 5 million copies. 
it's that production from Dr. Dre, that cosign from 50, who was the hottest guy at the time, is what catapulted him to a different level with 5 million copies sold your first week. Granted, he would have been even bigger if he stayed with them, but you know what happened with the situation. That's all history. Um, so I get what Game is saying. Basically, I would have been the game regardless. You probably wouldn't have been as big, though. That's the thing, is the argument there. So to, to now, you know, to jump and say, oh, you know, and Drink Champs, hey, 50 and Jimmy Iovine did more for my career than Dr. Dre did. Now you're flipping and saying, man, I would have been hot shit even if I had 50 or not. 50 side of the story, of course, as we all know, is that the game was struggling to write hooks. 50 came in to fix the situation, and that's why he got involved in G-Unit, so on and so forth. 50 helped him out, gave him hit records, and then that's why Game's career catapulted. Um, regardless, I think the best way to show like proof of this is when Game left um, G-Unit and Dr. Dre and then did Doctor's Advocate, the album went on to sell, I believe it was about 2 million, maybe, yeah, roughly 2 million copies. You could argue three, but there's no proof. RIA, there's no certification, actually. There's only a gold certification, meaning he only sold 500,000. But at the time, that was like in 2006, the certification, 2007, something like that. So by now, it probably would have gone platinum in America, maybe even double platinum. So let's just say he sold 2 million copies. So you go from getting a co-sign from Dr. Dre and 50 Cent for 5 million copies sold to leaving them having beef with them, having issues with them to selling 2 million copies. You see the difference in that? That's a huge difference. That's 3 million people that said, hey, I'm not going to fuck with this album anymore because he's not fucking with 50 or, or Dre. Now, did Game continue to have a career, a successful career? Yeah. Was it as successful as the first album? No. But then you can also argue it was because Game was a new artist and everybody liked what was new at the time, which was Game. And then once the second album came out, people already heard him, kind of got already got a whiff of him. They got tired of him. Kept them moving. That's another argument. Regardless, game needs to acknowledge Dre, 50, Jimmy, Eminem. That whole camp over there did something for his career, catapulted it to the next level. So the game, this is the whole situation flip-flopping. He'll sometimes switch his mind, say this and that. And I get it because now he's having issues with 50. They're trolling each other online, so it makes sense. Uh, continuing on, T.I. So as you guys, if you guys don't know, T.I.'s been doing this. He's been having a career shift. He is... Basically trying out to be a comedian. Yes, a comedian. Uh, make jokes. And he went out to the Barclays Center and performed his comedy show. And he got booed. He got booed badly. I mean, the boos are so loud that, damn. But, you know, instead of clowning him, you have to kind of give him props because, you know, he's given, he's given a shot at a totally new career. And it's hard to do that. It is very hard to do that. To give some, you know, to, to, to try something new when you don't have experience in it, it's very hard to do. So I give him props for that. Let me play the clip of him um, doing the comedy, and you're going to hear a lot of boos. I lose my 10, 11 years old, man. I think this is where the animosity started. The nigga walks in, caught me slamming his mom. You hear me? Nailing his mom. We ain't been the same since. Yo. Put that down. I got you got one more motherfucking album out of me. It's called Kill the King for motherfuckers like you. And I appreciate y'all because you made me the absolute best, nigga. New York has made me the motherfucking best, nigga. I appreciate you. Stay so yeah, he was getting booed. Um there was another clip that I can't find right now. But he was getting booed pretty badly, man. Um, the the jokes just weren't landing. Uh, no matter who you are, as a, as you know, in your previous career, when you enter a new field, you're gonna get treated like somebody completely new. I mean, fifty. Another example, of course, I always use fifty as an example because I know his story that well. You use fifty, for example, he gets into the executive producer with TV shows. He failed quite a few times. I'm actually working on a documentary about that. He failed quite a few times because the people didn't respect him. I didn't even respect him as an actor or anything like that. I didn't really think give a shit about his, you know, TV career side of things. I could care less. I was like, man, I like him for the music. His acting's garbage. And for the most part, it is. His acting, he can't act for shit. Um, he can play the gangster roles really well, but everything else, I just, yeah, it's, it's not good. So when T.I.'s going into this whole new career, nobody respects him as T.I. the rapper. They just see him as a new person. He's trying something new. And especially in New York where it's a tough crowd no matter what you do. Uh, getting booed like that, 
I'm sure he's going to find strength in that. He's probably going to fix his comedy act and maybe succeed in it. Who knows? I don't know why he's going the comedy route. It's very random, but uh, that's T.I. for you. So, yeah, just a crazy clip. New music. Let's get into it. Yeah, Koi LeRae uh, dropping her album Trendsetter featuring lots of artists. You got Nicki Minaj, Young Blue, Fabio Foreign, Young M.A., G. Herbo, Her, Lil Durk, Lil Tecca, Polo G, A Boogie with a Hoodie, Pooh Shiesty. So she's been killing it. And the fact that her father is Benzino and she's still doing great, the fact that she had to build up a lot of the relationships that he messed up, she's mentioned that a few times. Much props to her. You got Fabio Foreign with Bible. Got features from Quavo. Queen Naja, Koi LeRae, ASAP Rocky, Lil Yachty, Lil TJ, DJ Khaled, Polo G, Neo, Blueface. Lots of people, so I'm going to check that album out. Vince Staples, Ramona Park Broke My Heart. I actually checked this out. I actually did listen to some of this. It's a very, very, very unique and different album. I wouldn't be surprised if this album got treated like the Tyler, the Creator album, Call Me If You Get Lost, over time, obviously. But I'm liking this album so far. It's called Ramona Park Broke My Heart. Vince Staples. Go ahead and check that out. ESTG and 42 Doug dropped their collab project, Last Ones Left. 17 tracks featuring EST, uh, Team Tay Money, uh, Big 30, EST Zoo, 42 Cheese. That's really about it. Um, Paul Wall and Terminology start to finish. 10 tracks out of that. with No features. Singles wise, you got Bia featuring J. Cole London. The music video for that dropped. You got Jack Harlow first class. You got Lil Baby in a minute. And you got Lil Baby uh right on, which actually is I'm actually bumping the shit out of that right now. It just dropped. Uh you got Jim Jones, Lil Wayne, DJ Khaled, Joel, Santana Amigos. We set the trends remix. That sounds like a 2007 track because of those features, besides Migos, of course. But Jim Jones, Lil Wayne, DJ Khaled, Joel, Santana. I haven't seen that in forever. That reminds me of the early two thousands, man. Shout out to those features. I miss when artists would do like big tracks with features besides DJ Khaled. You know, like I just want a remix with like seven people on it. People need to start doing that more. You got IDK that dropped Taco. You got Tyga that dropped Lifetime. You got Russ that dropped Handsomer Extended. Action Bronson dropped Sub Zero. FL Dusa with Kevin Gates. Bad Man. Um, I like that record actually. Snot Benzo. And yeah, that's it for those. Album sales. Let's get into the album sales. See what Lil Durk is doing. You got Red Hot Chili Peppers at number one with Unlimited Love with 83,000 copies. You got Lil Durk at number two with 7220 with 52,000 copies. So he's on his, I believe, fourth week, 52,000. That's very good. Um, very good numbers for Lil Durk. And Canto Soundtrack is at number three with 50,000 copies. Morgan Wallen, Dangerous and Double Albums at number four with 43,000 copies. Olivia Rodrigo is number five. Sour with 37,000 copies. Thomas Wright, Where We Started, is at number six debut with 32,000 copies. The Weekend Highlights at number seven with 32,000 copies. Dreamville and J. Cole, D-Day at Gangsta Grills, mixtape debuted at number eight with 31,000 copies. Yeet to Alive debuted at number nine with 31,000 copies. Machine Gun Kelly, Mainstream Sellout, went from number one to number 10 at 31,000 copies. You got Drake Certified Lover Boy at number 11 with 30,000 copies. Doja Cat playing her at number 12 with 29,000 copies. Gunna DS Forever at number 13 with 27,000 copies. Lil Baby My Turn went up quite a few slots at number 15 with 20,000 copies. Uh, Kodak Black, Back for Everything, number 17 with 20,000 copies. Kid LaRae, Fuck Love, number 21 with 17,000 copies. Pop Smoke, Shoot for the Stars, Aim for the Moon, number 23 with 17,000 copies. Post Malone, Hollywood's Bleed, number 24 with 17,000 copies. Juice World Goodbye, Good Reddance, number 26, with 17,000 copies. Polo G Hall of Fame, number 31, 16,000 copies. Lil Nas X Monterio, number 35, with 16,000 copies. Lotto, 7777, um, number 38, with 15,000 copies. Rod Wave Soulfly, number 41, with 15,000 copies. Adele, 30, number 44, with 15,000 copies. Eminem, Curtain Call, still on the charts, number 48, with 14,000 copies. So shout out to all those people killing it. Lord Dirk is doing his thing. And that's it for today's episode of the Diverse Mentality Podcast number 133. Like I said, enter the PS5 giveaway, Diverse Mentality forward slash giveaway. Contest ends May 15th. Uh, giveaway announcement is May 22nd live streamed. 
the first mentality five-year anniversary this upcoming saturday may 16th at 3 p.m eastern you guys will be able to call in check it out and be on the youtube channel the main one diverse mentality um patreon.com forward slash diverse mentality shout out to everybody supporting and that's it uh stream of spotify deezer pocket cast all that youtube you know the drill have an amazing night day whenever you're listening to this and peace